On December 20th, 1968, the Zodiac gunned down Betty Lou Jensen and David Faraday, just outside Vallejo along Lake Herman Road. In this video, I will not talk about the murders or the police investigation, but I will talk about the forgotten witnesses, Bill and his girlfriend, who likely encountered the Zodiac Killer in the hours before the crime. When I contacted Bill, he told me what happened, and I quote, On December 20th, 1968, I was living with my parents in Vallejo, where I was born, raised, and still live. My girlfriend had moved from her parents' home in Napa, California, to San Francisco. She contacted me and was coming for the weekend to visit her parents and wanted to come by that day and show me her new sports car. It was a small, dark-colored car with two seats and a standard transmission. We decided to take it for a drive, and she suggested that I drive and try it out. Lake Herman Road is basically a desolate, two-lane winding county-type road that runs between East Vallejo and Benicia. There are few lights and some scattered ranch-type homes. It has changed very little over the years, and today my home is located a few minutes' drive away. Back then, Lake Herman Road was known to the local youth as a place that had a few well-known places to park and make out. The spot where the two youths were killed is one of those places. On this evening, I chose Lake Herman Road because I thought it would be a good place to test out the sports car. We drove down Lake Herman Road from Vallejo towards Benicia. I pulled into the entrance to the Benicia water pumping station. There is located a gate back off the main road, thus room to park. I pulled in and turned around with the car on the far right fringe of the entrance driveway with the lights off and the car still running. It was a cold night and I had the heater on. The car had toggle switches on the dashboard as controls, which were new to me. I was in the process of determining how they worked when I noticed a car coming from the direction of Benicia. As it passed in front of me, I did not recognize the car. Back in that day, your car was part of your identity and could only see that the driver was a white male with short hair and glasses. Again, at that time, there was no Zodiac. The car passed where I was parked and I noticed that it started to stop. I do not think the driver initially saw the car we were in as I was parked at the extreme north side of the driveway facing the road and our car was a small dark sports car that would have blended into the night. I noticed the backup lights of the other car come on and I remembered that they were round in shape. My senses told me that this was not a good thing and I turned on the lights, put the car in gear and took off towards Benicia. The other car pulled into the driveway of the pump station turned around and came in my direction of travel. I sped up and so did he. The next thing that happened was that he started to flash his headlights, high beam, low beam, high beam, etc., in an attempt to get me to pull over. I did not stop but sped up and so did he. Contrary to what the police report indicates, he was gaining on me as we sped down the road. There is a fork in the road with one leg going on towards Benicia and the other heading back toward Vallejo. I waited to the last possible second and turned the sports car toward the right fork. The larger car could not make the maneuver. I went down about 50 yards and stopped. I looked back and the other car had stopped. At that point, my youthful testosterone kicked in and I started yelling that I was going to go back and kick his ass. My girlfriend was upset, concerned, and started to cry. I watched the other car as it sat stopped in the roadway. After a few minutes, the other car slowly turned around and went back in the direction we had come from, back toward the pumping station. I decided that good judgment outweighed valor and decided to continue on home, and we did. Bill concludes, I am reasonably sure that the person who chased me that evening was the Zodiac, as I cannot come up with any other reasonable explanation of the events given the time, place, and circumstances of what happened that same night sometime later. I believe that what happened is that after the incident with me, he went back and parked his car and laid in wait for the next folks to park in that spot. Unfortunately, when the young couple did, they became his targets. 
If you want to know more about the facts of the Zodiac case and not biased reporting about so-called suspects, you may want to get my book, America's Jack the Ripper, The Definitive Account of the Zodiac Killer.